I asked the group here, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, what their definition of the innate intelligence was in one sentence. And I want to ask you the same question. If you could say it in one sentence, what would be your definition of the innate intelligence? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, it depends on where I come from that thought. You know, I, I, I believe my major premise, and this is mine, is that, you know, it, God put this intelligence in all, all of us, you know, and that no man can duplicate, you know, what, what he has done with this innate intelligence. And, you know, I, I believe it's an intelligence that um, wants to survive, you know, and, and God designed it that way, you know, and because of that, um, it will figure things out, as we just said you know, to survive. And the innate intelligence, you know, I, I believe it is in every cell of the body. I do. And, you know, when we looked at some of um, Bruce Lipton's early work, um, he said, you know, he believes that that intelligence resides in the cell membranes. Mm -hmm. More specifically, the in, what they call the integral membrane proteins, right? And you could look at those things as and uh, cell cell towers to our hormones. There you go. Those. Yeah. Thank you. Visuals worth a thousand words, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So those receptors um, are called integral membrane proteins. But here's what here's what Lipton said. Uh, when you take a when you take a cell, right? Because early scientists thought that the intelligence was the nucleus, right? It makes sense, right? It's that's where the DNA is housed. That's where everything's made. That's where decisions are made. You know, we, we make proteins. I mean, all of that comes out of the DNA. That's where our programming is, our software, our hardware. Okay, so that really makes sense. But what he found in other scientists is when you take out the nucleus of a cell, it still functions intelligently. So meaning the cell, if it were a white blood cell, it will still engulf organisms, right? It will still do its job. Couldn't be the intelligence. So... What he found was, is if you destroy the membrane of the cell, immediate death. Okay, more specifically, let's say we take away these integral membrane proteins and, and hit them with enzymes that disrupt them. Well, you still have an intact cell, but you have a cell that just doesn't function. Mm. So he believes that these integral membrane proteins house the intelligence that communicate, you know, literally with every wavelength, whether it be a hormone, whether it be a thought, whether it be, because that's a wavelength, whether it be light, right? Red light, right? I mean, all of these, every wavelength is energy. So a thought is energy that can be transmitted through nerves. And then from beyond a nerve, it can be transmitted via a wavelength or even a chemical. But ultimately these, inter these integral membrane proteins then communicate that information into the DNA and then into the cell and it creates this function. You know, I mean, my, my background, um, as a chiropractor, we thought, hey, the innate intelligence resides in the brain. And I do believe that. But again, it, it's the cells of the brain. Because remember, there was two cells that formed. And I believe that innate intelligence was there. And then it made it, you know, then it made four. And then it kept dividing and dividing. And the first thing to form was a brain. And then it grew a little tail. That's our spinal cord. And then off of every, uh, off of that uh, tail or spinal cord came all these other little nerves, which are called, you know, peripheral nerves, and then they grow, they start to grow organs and other tissues. And now we start to have this little, little human, you know, that has organs and a little brain and spinal cord, then it grows. And then the flesh, I mean, imagine this, right? Then eyeballs. And so again, where did it start? It started with two cells here, you know, but that brain actually is called the neural tube. And I'm not going to take it back into our biology, but that neural tube was a, a cell that folded on itself to make that brain and grew at that cord. So ultimately it still is that the intelligence is in the membranes and the intelligence is still here. That is the organizer of all the other cells in your body. And that communication is that innate intelligence and it is brilliant. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, it, did that answer the question? Because I don't know what it is beyond that. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a great answer. And you know, I, I once heard you say a few years ago, if you would just take some time to study the cell membrane, you would be in total awe. And that's exactly what you just said. So the question is this now, if the, the intelligence of the cell is this lipid bilayer, the membrane, what's the number one cause of the interference, the inf inflammation? What is the number one cause of inflammation around that membrane? You know, early in my career, I, I talked about 
you know, because th there's many causes, right? I talked about the three main ones, right? I talked about bad fats because people weren't understanding the impact of vegetable oil, canola oils, and these rancid fats that make their way. They're rancid omega-6. Now, fish oil. Yeah, fish oil. These are fats, you know, that like omega-6 fats got a bad rap and omega-3 was the king. But I, you know, again, my, my research, but others talks about how omega-6 is really the king, the, the key to a healthy cell membrane, which explains why vegetable oils, canola oils are so disrupt, disruptive to the membrane because they come in and they replace the good fats with rancid fats and create dysfunction in the membrane. Fish oil is mostly an omega-3 that um, comes in and can disrupt and drive inflammation as well because omega-3 still is important. Um, however, I would argue that the six in the membrane is, is the most important fat. But the, the bottom line, so fats are can be very healing or disruptive. So that made my list. Glucose and insulin create inflammation, especially when you're, you know, you're constantly insulin spike, glucose spike, insulin spike, they drive cellular inflammation. That's why diabetics have neuropathies and they inflammation, they die of, you know, heart attack, strokes, other conditions, because it's so devastating, you know, to have insulin and glucose spikes that constantly, and that's what the standard American diet does, right? And in many of the gluten-free diets today, they're eating super sugars, which cause glucose spikes and you know, and it ages you prematurely. And then the biggest one of all, the third, is toxins. It's the, they make their way into these fatty membranes, they drive inflammation, and it is the one that is not dealt with correctly because most detox is not done at the cellular level. But these toxins come into that lipid fatty bilayer, two layers of fat, and there they're driving inflammation, blocking your hormones, blocking what the cell should do. It, it affects something called cellular fluidity. And that's just think of that as the, the function of the cell, how things move in and out and how the, the cell performs its function. A decrease in fluidity is a cell that's sick. A decrease in fluidity is a person that's sick. So we want fluid cells and toxins disrupt that fluidity. So do bad fats, so do glucose and insulin spikes. And I'll add one more as a bonus. Our thoughts, mm. as you know, many people pointed out, is a wavelength that can drive cellular inflammation. And when I say thoughts, you know, obviously we can trap emotions and store traumas in our brain, in this really the, the headquarters of our intelligence, right? Sending these bad thoughts through the body. You run patterns and these patterns are set up or are driving inflammation, literally. Let me just give you one example, right? If you thought of a, a thought from childhood that was very traumatic, we could be measuring your cortisol and other hormones in the body and we would see physiologically the stress that your thought created, right? So someone that um, that's, was in World War II, like my father, he could be in certain conversations that would trigger him and I could watch his physiology change, right? What would happen if we measured these chemicals, we would see an immediate change. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I, I tell you, with that, I just thought of something. And I don't remember whose book this was in, but they took, um, it was a, 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 um, a Japanese gentleman who was in the war. And there was so, he had so much trauma, obviously, like most did uh, during that war, that they took his cells and they put them in a Petri dish across the room. And they showed him videos that they knew would trigger him into the state that I'm talking, thought. And of course, we would expect his cells to react in his body. But what happened was, is the cells across the room in the Petri dish had the same reaction, wow. one not in his body. Isn't that incredible? That's you know, talking about a whole nother level of, you know, communication, right? We're talking about, uh, you know, a whole nother level of physics here, right? So now, so at what point, uh, could this occur? So they took the cells, I, I think it was like 30 some miles away in a lab. Now here was the unique thing about what happened. They, scientists looked at the cells and they marked down each reaction, right? And so when the cells did certain things, they marked it down, the time, when the cells did this, the time, when the cells did that, the time, when it released this, the time. Okay, and then they took when they, the exact, on this side where the, they were showing him the videos, 
they marked the video, what they showed, what it showed, the time, the time, the time. It was exact. The cells 30 miles away were reacting at the exact same time he was seeing the pictures 30 miles away. That's, the, I mean, think about that intelligence, right? I mean, what, that's like when you have twins that are across the world. Yeah. And one is in grave danger and the other knows and senses it, right? That's cell to cell communication. I mean, that's a whole nother, <laughs> um, you know, aspect. So when you ask me the question, what is an intelligence? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know it's beyond me. <laughs> wow. That gave me goosebumps. I see all the comments. Everybody is like, wow, wow. That's, that's something else.